Hey guys, a uh, couple of quick updates here. Firstly, um, uh, the laptop has a dead hard drive. I don't know if any of you guys usually have any problems with uh, HP computers, but apparently this isn't a new thing. I thought I had done something to the laptop. Maybe I should take those off and lean up a little bit. But uh, it's going to be dead for a while, so unfortunately, uh, hand cam videos for now. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Bo Bergdahl. Really, just that situation. Uh, it's a very interesting story to me because it does sound like, uh, due to some of the allegations, that Bo Bergdahl kind of got himself captured. And it does sound like, due to several allegations, that uh, quite a few uh, soldiers were killed trying to find him back in 2009. But what really surprises me is all the death threats his family is getting. And uh, what also surprises me is the Republican media's, uh, the right-wing media's uh, rhetoric regarding this prisoner exchange. Um, I hope I don't lisp too much. I got some new hardware in the mouth. Uh, before you know it, I'll have shiny white teeth that don't look like ass on camera anymore. But I, I don't really care. I don't think you do either. Let's get to it. So... His family's getting death threats because I think they tried to make themselves very sympathetic to the Taliban, both him and his family. He, uh, Bo was held for almost five years. So he naturally probably did what it took to survive, including and up to maybe more or less even converting to Islam or at least adapting uh, that manner of speech and communication, as was seen from his talking to President Obama and, and whatnot. And his family, uh, you know, his dad grew a beard and stuff, and I think they were, you know, just basically doing what it took to make sure their son wasn't hurt and to be as sympathetic to his captors as possible. That makes sense to me. But the right wing, oh my god, we traded prisoners. Oh my god. We traded five guys from Gitmo that we've had for years. We know their names, we have their DNA and their fingerprints, we know who they know, whatever they've divulged in captivity, we know. We gave, basically, uh, five defunct, non-functional, not useful terrorists back to the Taliban in exchange for a, an American life. And this is now colluding with terrorists. I just wanted to bring up a point that it won't take too long to get across. Um, since 9-11, the American awareness and understanding of what global terrorism is has changed dramatically from the way it used to be. And it's very little understood now how much America had to do with creating terrorism in the past and how much they have to do with creating terrorism in the present. The way America creates terrorism in the present isn't trading um, five well-documented Gitmo detainees back to the Taliban. The way America promotes terrorism right now is over the past 10 years there has been the um, lied about basically murder of well over 3,000 civilians in just drone strikes alone. The total civilian cost of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan is enormous. And I'm pretty sure it's up in the six digit margin right now in terms of lives lost of just civilians on their side. But almost equal to the amount of lives left lost on September 11 has been the amount of collateral damage caused by drone attacks alone in Yemen and in Pakistan and in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, and naturally, that means that people over there don't really like us. They hear a plane and they fear for their lives um, because we do something called signature strikes, which means we don't know what we're shooting at. We, th we have intelligence that somebody's there and more often than not, it's a cell phone that is associated with terrorism by as many as two displacements. You know how six degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon works? 
It means that this phone called a guy who called a guy who's a known threat to the United States. So we're bombing this phone and whoever's in the general vicinity of it. Naturally, over 3,100 civilian lives lost. Over 300 of them, children, little kids, okay? So, if you don't think that's making some anti-American sentiment jihadis, you're naive. Let it never be said that just because I am more or less left-leaning and liberal means that I care for Obama in the slightest. I don't. Um, the next thing is how America made terrorism in the past. And this is relatively easy to get through. Uh, Reagan plus Iran back in 1980, 81 and 2 caused a ton of trouble. Everything that Saddam had, we gave him so that he could fuck up Iran because Iran took some hostages back in 79. And a lot of American lives were lost trying to get those hostages and failed uh, attempts. Canada ended up being the guys who got them. Um, Nobody, uh, Argo was not a true story. It was uh, Canadians, Canadian uh, military, got the hostages back. It was called the Canadian Caper, not Argo. <laughs> uh, next is, um, we gave Saddam Hussein a lot of weaponry. And it didn't take us long with George Bush Sr. to go and kick his ass for having it. Now, Saddam Hussein was a piece of shit, and I was pro-war for... A good long while, at least until Saddam was found and hang, because he was a genocidal uh, Middle Eastern Hitler. He caused millions of deaths. The estimates are in upwards of three million deaths in Iraq and I in Iran, not just from war, just from him genociding people, uh, because he's fucking bad news. And it was worth getting rid of him. And yes, he was harboring terrorists. Did he have weapons of mass destruction? No. Did the Bush administration lie knowingly about almost everything in uh, justification up to and leading that war? Yes. Should that war in Iraq have happened? Probably not. The war in Afghanistan? Probably yes. Now, um, because of the way the news media works, I've met people who did not know that we invaded Afghanistan first and that we were still there and that we were there longer and worked harder on that war. Um, and that that war was pretty much justified. It was not long after we invaded Afghanistan that we invaded Iraq, and that was a media fucking circus for 10 years. But, uh, I guess I'm getting off into a ramble. So look, here's the point. Uh, Reagan basically armed Iraq. Reagan armed jihadi terrorists. Um, even before that, we'd been ar we armed Afghanistan. To, to go to war with Russia during the Cold War. We gave Afghanistan every last fucking thing they had. So everything the Taliban has, everything that the Iraqi insurgents have, everything that both those countries had in terms of militaries, we gave them. So, and we were telling them, hey, go genocide our enemies. But we're dealing with Islam, and Islam doesn't like fucking anything other than Islam. And it was only a matter of time before they turned on us. I mean, it's not as like we haven't earned their ire. Meaning, this administration, even more than Bush's, uh, just wanton destruction of both those countries. And shady deals. And, uh, look, we've been uh, bombing basically whoever Pakistan asked us to. Pakistan isn't our friends. They're an official ally. We're allowed to use their airspace. We pay them a lot for it, uh, but they don't like us. They broke off from India because they're super Islamabad, baby. And uh, so, look, it's just more complicated, is what I'm trying to say, than, than five terrorists who we know exactly who they are and probably bugged them and have them under surveillance and know exactly where they are at this moment so we could return an American life who may or may not have been a shitty soldier. Okay, it was a good deal. The Republican outright, uh, outrage is outrageous. And, hey, stay informed, people, all right? Hopefully you get the laptop back soon.